This clip is about some changes we can make to the open source point of sale program. And the first one I'd like to talk to is about the minus sign on the receipts, which is here. That's optional. Uh, we don't have to show that because it makes you look wrong to some viewers' minds. So what we can do is change some of the coding. In this file, this folder here, there's uh, the program files. And if I go to application, helpers, and look in currency helper, down here on that line there, return, it's got the, the minus sign, the dash, between single quotes. All I need to do is take that little dash out. Save the program and upload it, and that will then be gone. That little minus sign won't be there anymore. There are some other changes we can make. If we go into application views partial, we can remove some of the things that you may not want in there. Let's have a look at that. <coughs> That's checker, application, views, partial. Now this refers to the top and bottom parts of the web pages. If we look in header, and we see here where it's got some information, some code and so forth between the title tags, that is the bit that shows in the web browser. And we can delete that, we can take that right out and we can put in whatever we want. So we call our program here Checker for the sake of this experiment. Um, we can just call it Checker. <coughs> and if we save that, and when that's uploaded again, it won't show anything about open source point of sale at the top. It will just show Checker. Further down, there's something that says open source point of sale. And if we take that out, the text between the quotes. We can close those up and then that won't show either. So where it would normally say powered by, this is powered by or powered by open source point of sale, it won't show anything there. There are some other bits in other, pro in other files that we can change. We'll come on to those in a moment. I'm going to save that Let's have a look at our list again. If we go into languages English common lang PHP, we can change some things in there. So let's have a look in the folder on the desktop again, that one. So application languages English common lang. Now in here, it's got the powered by again, and if we don't want to show that, we can simply delete that between the quotes. And if there's anything else there we're unhappy with or want to change, we can do that. So for example, down here it says you are using open source point of sale version. If we don't want that to display, we can take it out. Please visit my, we can take that out see if there's anything else we want to take out. Well, welcome to open source point of sale. If you don't want to put that in there, you can change it. So in our case, we will put welcome to checker. Please select a module. We can leave it like that. Please select a module. And we can just have a the full stop or period there. We don't have to have a, an exclamation mark. In here I'm going to change return policy to returns policy so it applies to more than one item or more than one return. And if there's something there we want to change, we can. Yeah. Um, for example, in England somebody might prefer to have county rather than state. So we can put county. I may prefer town rather than city and I may prefer postcode rather than zip and so on. 
Is there anything else you want to change? Email's okay. First name, last name. The others don't look too bad. So if we save that, we can close that, close that. Let's see what else we've got. Postcode, information return. Okay, in application English config lang PHP, I'll change yeah, the change business. Um, let's have another look in the folder then. So what's that one yet? config lang php that one there now some people may not want to have company they may want to have business so we could change all instances of the word company to business the rationale there is that all business not all businesses are companies but all companies are businesses I could use the find and replace for this but it's easy just to go through here doesn't take long Yep, and let me copy that. Didn't like it, did it? Let's try that again. put company web or business web rather than website and that's okay returns policy print receipt after sale language time zone um, it doesn't actually print the receipt automatically it generates or raises a receipt so we've got business name home web I'm just going to put web there could put business web if we wanted tax rate tax rate Okay, save that one, and that's uh, a personalization that may um, be okay for some users. Right, uh, we can change the default welcome message, I think we did that one. Okay, in reports language, let's have a look at that one. This one here. We can look down here and see if there's anything in those lines we want to change. And the one I was interested in was profit. Let's um, edit and find that. Search and find it. There. Now in the reports it says profit. But really what it's referring to is the difference between the buying price and the selling price of items and it's not true profit. It may suit a, some dictionary definitions of profit in a loose sense but in, uh, in an accounting sense it's not really profit of a business and it can confuse some users so I prefer to change it to markup which is nearer the truth. We can go through here and if there's anything we're not happy with we can change it. And that's always available to do. You can go through any of these files, look through the, the script, the text, and see if there's anything you want to update. Okay, so that's the profit. There is another thing on wrapping on the receipts. If we have a receipt, let's see if we can raise one. Just close this for a moment, go back to our program. Let's have a look at the receipt here in a no, that's, that's okay, that'll do. If we put an item down and the item has got a long description and it may be truncated, it may not all fit there because this 
page is broken down into sections by percentage and its default is not to wrap anything around onto the next line but if we remove a small piece of code from a, a CSS file a cascading style sheet file we can get it to wrap and the file we need is here it's in the CSS folder it's ospos print CSS and remove the end part so let's have a look at that in the folder if we go to our checker folder in the CSS one it's the OS print CSS ospos print CSS and right down at the bottom no that's the wrong one sorry what did I say to here what did I say in here Pos print CSS, yeah, it should be the right one. Yep, it says no wrap. And if we take that part out, if we take that off, if we just delete that all together, then it will allow it to wrap. So we just delete that, save the file, and then <coughs> it will allow it to wrap onto the next line. So long descriptions and further information can go on the receipt. I won't do that because it suits us on this demo to have the uh, the lines unaffected. Now when we use the program sometimes when we're changing from one screen to another the thing jumps. Let me go back to the main screen. If I go on to different parts of it certainly in some browsers we see that it jumps to the right now just now on the right there was a scroll bar if I go back to the last page there's a scroll bar if I click on sales then it jumps because the scroll bar isn't there occupying part of the screen we can fix that by taking out some code or by putting in a line of code so in another CSS file in the OSPOS CSS file we can put this line HTML height 101% that one into the file just before the word body as shown below so I put it in here just there so if we go to that file let's have a look in our checker folder again go to CSS so it's OSPOS CSS. It starts there with all these at bits. And if we go into here and paste that bit in there, what it does is makes the page longer than 100%. And in order to scroll down and see the 1%, it puts the scroll bar in because it goes beyond the norm. And if we put that in and save that file, then upload it then it will put a scroll bar on every page and even if you don't need the scroll bar because there's only a tiny bit under it then it will stop it from jumping the reason that's important for users is that if you've got a sales assistant or checkout operator whatever you want to call them a till person and this thing jumps around when they're using it they may not thank you they may find that it's rather off-putting if something jumps around also it looks a bit unprofessional and clumsy so if I do that and then that and it all moves across it looks wrong it doesn't matter to some people but I think if you want employees if you want your staff to think you're using good quality programs and they're consistent then it's better if you can get it to work consistently we can add logos uh, we can put a logo up here we can put a logo here if we want and we can put a logo on the receipt I think I'll talk about that in another clip because this one's getting rather large now so we'll do logos separately I think that's enough for now and I'll do some more clips later on thanks for listening bye for now